Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Talents Unlimited, where we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Tonight, we have our speaker, who is going to be Robert Ortiz, who is going to enlighten us about the promises that we made to Toastmasters when we joined. The title of his presentation is called Promises. I bring to the lectern Robert Ortiz. Thank you, and good evening. Welcome to Talents Unlimited Toastmasters. We meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m., and we are starting our new year, our Toastmasters New Year, where we will be refreshing our promises that we made initially when we joined Toastmasters. So we're so this should be interesting. I think it's a time to reflect uh, what we promise, not only to ourselves, but to our fellow members. So tonight, we're going to give them a little bit of a presentation and see where, see if we can bring back some memories here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start our Toastmasters promise. So can you see the screen? Hello? No. You don't see it. Why no. does that always happen to me? Are you sharing? Yep, I am sharing. I don't, oh, but there we there go. There it goes, there it goes. It's always my fault when I do this kind of thing. So anyway, so can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So tonight, as I just mentioned, we are going to talk about the Toastmasters promise. This is Talents Unlimited Toastmasters promise series, refreshing our commitment. So what is the mission of Toastmasters? Well, it's to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every individual has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. So what does that mean? Well, if I was to put this in bullet form, we're going to provide a mutually supportive and learning environment. We're going to help develop our communication, oral communication and leadership skills. And more importantly, two big bullets is to foster self-confidence for ourselves and others and continual personal growth. So that's what the Toastmasters mission statement is all about. So the Toastmasters promise, what is the Toastmasters promise? I would imagine that many of us don't even recall what that Toastmasters promise is. We took that pledge, some of us, many years ago. For myself, I think it's this August will be my fifth year. For Jim, I think it's a little bit more. Carolyn, I you know, we're all in the same boat, many, many years. But how many times, not only myself, but others have reflected on that Toastmasters promise. So let's go over those promises a little bit. First promise is to attend club meetings regularly. Second one, to prepare all of my projects to the best of my ability basing them on the Toastmasters education system, education program, to prepare and fulfill meeting assignments, to provide fellow members with helpful constructive evaluations, to help the club maintain the positive, friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow, 
to serve as a club officer when called upon to do so. Continuation, to treat my fellow club members and our guests with respect and courtesy. To bring guests to club meetings so they can see the benefits of Toastmasters and what Toastmasters has to offer. To adhere to the guidelines and rules for all Toastmasters education and recognition programs and to act within Toastmasters core values of integrity, respect, service, and excellence during the conduct of all Toastmasters activity. So that's, that's quite a bit of promises there. And I'm sure like me and, and you as well, we don't remember all of those core values, all of those promises, but tonight we're gonna during this Toastmasters, Talents Unlimited Toastmasters Promise Series, we're gonna do two promises a week. And tonight, we're gonna begin to attend club meetings regularly and to prepare, that's gonna be presented by myself, and to prepare all my projects to the best of my ability, basing them on the Toastmasters education program in which Mr. DTM himself, Jim Kearney, will be our presenter. So, fellow Toastmasters, what is it that is so important about attending Toastmasters meetings regularly. Why is it so important? Well, skill development. If you take any development, whether it's a career, personal, playing games, whatever the case may be, that development does not come easy. It only comes when you attend or perform that activity regularly. If you don't perform it regularly, obviously your achievement level in whatever activity you're performing is not gonna be able to develop as you would like it, like it to intend to be. For Toastmasters, skill development and public speaking only can happen when you attend Toastmasters and participate in Toastmasters. Communication, to be able to converse. Conversing is not only important in career development, in addition, personal, in our personal lives as well. Leadership skills, Toastmasters offers that leadership in which we can participate. By attending regularly, our leadership can be developed in a safe environment. So, when, when, by regularly attending these meetings, it's going to ensure consistent practice and constructive, regular constructive feedback, leading to a faster, consistent growth. Now, we talked about building confidence. As I just said, that supportive atmosphere that Toastmasters provides us, it's going to help us develop and overcome those fear of public speaking quicker by practice, practice, and practice, where we're gonna gain that confidence in our abilities and the familiarity as, as we continue to publicly speak and perform in other activities. It's gonna be more and more familiar, so it will become more and more comfortable and there's gonna be less anxiety. Now, another thing that you probably never, never thought of is that, and that's networking. We're not all coming to Toastmasters meeting. Sure, to learn all these skills is one thing, but networking with one another is huge. By networking one another, we build connections. 
Sure, we have a Toastmasters connection, but there will be connections outside of Toastmasters as well. And those connections, as you know, can lead to other opportunities within our professional and personal lives. Toastmasters provides leadership development. So if you don't attend these meetings regularly, that meeting development is going to be erratic. It's not going to be consistent. You're not going to learn how to maintain that level of thinking that's going to help you evolve into a consistent leader. And by the way, if you're an officer in Toastmasters, it's okay to make mistakes in Toastmasters. By attending meetings regularly, it's going to help you practice that leadership and become more proficient, more competent, and develop those leadership abilities. And that, again, that can only happen by attending the meetings and managing projects, getting organized, participate, take on those roles. But you can't take them on if you're not here. So we encourage you to stick to that promise of encouraging your regular attendance. We talked about personal growth. I don't want to dwell on it again, but I cannot emphasize enough how much your personal development and my personal development is interlocked. By you not participating in joining Toastmasters regularly, you're kind of depriving your fellow members of that good, honest feedback and evaluation. Your input, your input is necessary in order to build that camaraderie, teamwork, and problem solving. Your ideas matter, but your ideas may be missing, or they are missing, if you're not attending Toastmasters meeting regularly. So overall, Attending a Toastmasters meeting is a valuable investment in your development. It's going to help enhance consistent communication, build confidence, expanding our network big time, and develop those leadership skills and foster, more importantly, what you paid for, that personal growth. So I encourage you. Please attend those personal, attend those club meetings, and I guarantee your growth will accelerate. You become more comfortable, less anxiety, and most of all, your fellow members will thank you for it. So, do we have any questions on tonight's presentation about? Attending meetings regularly. Jim, do you benefit? How do you benefit from attending meetings regularly? You're, you're a regular participant. So what benefits do you have that you for DC? Well, uh, I at least get my money's worth. I, <laughs> you know, I when I sit here and I see the people that don't attend regularly, and I read the, the first promise that's there, I keep thinking to myself that the hidden word is not either pronounced or understood. Commitment. If I'm going to turn around and I'm going to spend money to come to this organization, to learn how to speak, to learn how to become a leader, to, to do whatever it is I'm trying to do while I'm here, that takes a commitment and it requires for me to show up and be here and participate in order to learn and grow. And anyone who's not doing that is cheating themselves. You, you paid X number of dollars for it, and you're not getting X number of dollars worth of work. You're only getting A and B out of it, and you're not getting X, Y, and Z. So you're cheating yourself. People should look at what they committed to and then show up and take care of it. Now, don't get don't get me wrong, Robert. I mean, I I understand that things happen. Right? Life happens. Uh, people retire, people move out of state, and so they don't they don't have to they don't 
push to stay in Toastmasters. People lose their jobs and, and they don't want to pay or whatever. But it's beyond those different things, beyond the life thing. If those life things aren't coming at you, your kid's not sick, you don't have anyone in the hospital, your pets are okay, there's no reason for you not to show up. Spend a little bit of time with your friends and grow. It's only an hour. I, 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 don't, I don't see why people don't do it. And I don't see why they don't understand the word commitment. Carolyn, why is it... Why is attending meetings regularly so important for you? And what do you get out of it when other individuals show up? Well, attending meetings is very important, but I, I would like to ask the question, when do you present the promises to the new members? Because I did, wasn't presented with the promise when I joined Toastmasters. I was asked to join, so... I knew of Toastmasters, but I didn't know a lot about Toastmasters when I joined. So, so I the, learned it along the way. So the promise is on the application. And whoever is signing you up should have pointed that out. And you should also have gotten it during uh, member orientation. I never had member. I, I never had member orientation, number one. I, I, hey, I now we know what a problem is, right? I did <laughs> I did not have member orientation. Uh huh. Somebody else did fill out the application for me. And I think I just signed it. I really never saw the application. So I think that's an issue for a lot of people because sometimes um, I know some members have been signed up and they never see the application. Somebody else fill out the application because I've done it. For somebody, they call me, say, fill out this application, and they give me the information. I fill out the application for the member and submit the payment. So I never really interacted with the member or know if they got the paperwork. So I think that happens sometimes where people don't have all the information that they need when they do join the organization. And that's and why we a, have mentors. And you bring up a very important point. Carolyn, and that is for all of you VPs of membership and presidents, VP of education, you heard it from Carolyn herself. Nobody presented the Toastmasters promise to her. And we just went over some bullet points of why attending regularly is so important. So if you're not presenting that promise, how do they know what they're missing? And I would have to say, I'm gonna ask you, Martin, if you're not providing them what that promise is, and in fact, what members promise to one another, is it all about money in the end? Well, I, I'm say, hold on. Okay. All right. Well, I was driving. Oh, I am <laughs> sorry. Now you no, say no, this no, is no, dedicate. No. This is dedication, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So, so, <laughs> so, so my, to, uh, let me repeat the question. Okay. Let me repeat the question. Carolyn, when Carolyn joined Toastmasters. She was not presented the Toastmasters promise. So she didn't really know what she was missing and what we as members promised her and what she promised to other members. Now, she obviously, she paid for her pathways and her membership in Toastmasters. But if she isn't presented these values, the Toastmasters promise, isn't, isn't it? Doesn't it look like we're just asking for money and membership? Your your thoughts? That could be part of the part of it. I don't know if that's the driving goal. Although you know, with Toastmasters, there there is that push for membership that you got have you have to have so many members in order to keep the club active or a certain designation. So there's always that 
you know, that push for more members, more members. And, and sometimes maybe, you know, we do forget about the true intent of Toastmasters, right? It's to develop people into public speaking, to, you know, to be better at public speaking and hopefully to further their, you know, whatever their goals are. Mm -hmm. And I think that does get lost sometimes because there's such a push to maintain a certain number of members. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, there's some you know, truth to that. And it was, I, I believe that, I, I, it was, although it's been a while, I think it's, I've been with Talents Unlimited uh, probably close to 15 years. So I can't really remember if, if that was something that was presented <laughs> to me Although we did have some um, refresher courses uh, like you're doing now, kind of to refresh the importance of attending regularly. And it's not just for self-development, right? The attending, but also it's uh, there are roles to fill every week. And if we don't have the members yeah, the same people end up doing the performing the same roles over and over again. Yeah, um, so I think that's another, you know, another important reason we we'll like to attend regularly is that so that people don't get stuck with the, the same roles week after week. And it's always nice to hear feedback from different members. So if you only if you have the same members attending every week. And they're providing them feedback on a weekly basis. I don't know if that's such a good idea. That I'm sorry, I'm waving bye to my grandkids. They're leaving right now. I'm still in the car, <laughs> and they're leaving. That's too. okay. Well, I'll, t I'll, I'll tell you what. Thank you for your thank you for your input. Well, they I, left. I want to go back. To, <laughs> they left, but I'd like to go back to Carolyn real quick because. I feel like uh, she's been kind of like a, a letdown. And Carolyn, so when you were not presented or familiar with the Toastmasters promise, do you feel a certain letdown or you missed out on anything? Not really, because later on I did read it for myself. Uh, I didn't feel a letdown because I didn't know to be let down. So, you know, I didn't really feel a let down. It probably would have enhanced my experience mm -hmm. if I had known about the promise and some of the obligations coming into Toastmaster. But, you know, somebody invited me, they signed me up. So that's, that's what happened. And, you know, like when you first joined, your two pathways were, I did two pathways. I didn't have to pay for them. They were free. So, but, you know, someone did go over the assessments of the pathways and they talked about the pathways. They just never talked about the promise. They talked about other stuff. So, but I think what happens sometime in the great scheme of things that you are busy focusing on those DCP points and that's just getting members. So mm -hmm. you... I'm not going to say you don't get quality members, but sometimes that's why you wind up with paper members. I call them people that don't attend because mm -hmm. you ask them to join because you're trying to fulfill a goal. So once your goal is fulfilled, which is to get a certain number of members, then the why and the reason why they should stay in Toastmasters or some of the benefits of Toastmasters are not explained or get, I want to say, push to the back of the burner because that wasn't your focus. The focus wasn't to get the members to come in and really stay. You're just trying to fulfill a goal at this point in the Toastmasters journey, which I think is kind of, um, it, it hurts the clubs when you do the paper members. It does hurt the clubs because the members, a lot of times they don't stay. And well, so you have you have members on the roll for this particular time, but they may not come back because they didn't get the benefits of Toastmasters. Well, thank you, Carolyn, for your valuable input. I just want to uh, talk about 
the the numbers, the Toastmasters attending meetings regularly, it, and the numbers game, it kind of reminds me of a major corporation, or you can think of many yourself, where if you think only about the numbers game, the quality of whatever, whatever you're trying to sell is a poor value. So it's important that when you attend and you promise to attend these meetings regularly, that that commitment, as Jim spoke about, is there because other members depend on you, as Martin indicated as well, with the evaluations hearing it from different people and role assignments. And I want to thank everyone for their valuable input and their view on why people should be attending Toastmasters meetings. So I want to thank you all. And let's go ahead and move to our next, next subject. And our next, next subject is going to, second promise, is going to be pre presented my, by Mr. Jim Kearney. And the topic, the promise he's going to be talking about is to prepare all of my projects to the best of my ability, basing them on the Toastmasters education program. So fellow Toastmasters, Jim Kearney. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Look, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I feel that if I don't come to the meeting after I paid all this money, then I'm cheating myself. That same thought process exists with people who are doing these projects. So in the educational system that uh, Toastmasters are, is pathways, right? It's set up. There's different projects inside every single pathway. The first two levels will always teach you about the basics of Toastmasters and the Levels three through five teach you all the important pieces about the subject matter of the path that you're taking. Mm -hmm. The problem that I see a lot of times is people will look at the name of the project and boom, I'll write my speech, which is good in and of itself. Oh, okay, I can write my speech. Now let's take, let's take for example, right? So uh, we'll take um, uh, what's the one that I selected here? Let me let me see what what I selected. Here. Uh, let me share my screen here. Sure. I selected writing a speech with purpose. Right. So uh, whatever path that you're on, if you're on a humor path, then there's going to be a general purpose of humor. If you're on a dynamic leadership path, then there's going to be a general purpose of leadership. But what's the purpose of the speech? Now, are you trying to inform somebody? Are you trying to persuade them? Are you trying to entertain them? Or are you trying to inspire them? Uh, the problem with some of this stuff that I see in Toastmasters is uh, people don't look at these things. So when you when you come up in here and they skip all this stuff and they just start writing their speech because they know a certain subject. And that speech ends up going all over the place. Right? Okay, I'm going down this way here and then this happens. And then I go down this way here and then this happens. And then I go down this way here and this happens. And so the, the speech jumps. And your organization of the speech is basically... Garbage. Well, if you have, you're gonna have the giggle effect, right? Garbage in, garbage out. So if you're putting garbage into your speech, your audience is getting the garbage that's coming out of your mouth. To make the speeches effective, you need to actually go inside the project, similar to this one. I'm inside the project, and you find out what the different pieces are. You learn the different skills that they talk about. And you move from there. Uh, let's see if I can move this out of the way somehow. 
So in this particular piece, you see where it says know your purpose, right? So mm -hmm. if you look down here, the know your purpose is down here towards the bottom. Well, actually, it's here, number three. Know your purpose and defining your purpose. And they have the stuff here at the top. Writing a speech with purpose, an introduction, talk about your assignment, and then all of a sudden, write an engaging speech. And this is what I was talking about, right? People jump right in and they write that engaging speech. That's backwards. If you don't know the purpose of your speech and the purpose that you're trying to convey to the audience, then everything you're writing is useless. So you have to know it and you have to define it ahead of time. That way, everything you write is geared towards that specific purpose. And if you don't go into the details of this particular project, you'll never know that. In your head, you have a thought process that says, okay, this is the purpose that I'm writing the speech. And then you turn around and you write an engaging speech and boom, there you go. It's all said and done. But that doesn't necessarily translate to the correct skills because you didn't go inside the project. You didn't read the skills. You didn't take time to analyze those skills and put them to use. And if you don't do that, you don't grow. I'm sure there are plenty of times that you've seen people sit there and say, okay, I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. And when they give a speech off the top of their head, they're all over the place. It doesn't work. They, they expect to get credit, but you didn't learn the skills that were necessary. As Toastmasters, we need to stop cheating ourselves. We need to open those projects. We need to look at the projects, see what's inside, learn those skills, and put them to use. And you will do, in reality, what you do in practice. So if you practice here at Toastmasters, putting those skills to use, when you get out in the real world outside of Toastmasters, you have those skills, you have the ability, and you put them to use. It will make you a better leader. It will make you a better speaker. It will make everyone turn around and enjoy listening to you and what you have to say. Now, if you want people to know that that other people need to learn Toastmasters and learn skills, we 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 can go with the very simple thing: Oz and Oms. Don't have to go much farther than that, right? You, you turn around, listen to your politicians when they speak. Every single one of our politicians needs to learn those methods. Yes, they do. So, so if 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 there's a if there's a Toastmasters club in Washington D.C., they have an unlimited number of people that they can talk to. Join that club because they all say ah and um and uh, and it just sounds so bad. I don't know how these people are running our country when they can't even turn around and communicate. No, I, I don't I don't want to get into politics. So let's so let's just <laughs> but we'll get we'll get off the subject, right? It's it just it's a pet peeve of mine every time I listen to the news and I hear them talk. The skills are there. A lot of people when we switched to pathways didn't like it because it was all online. But every single skill and the legacy program is inside the Pathways program. Plus more. They're all there. We need to learn them, and we need to put them to use. This club and this presentation here that we're doing tonight, this is a new skill that didn't exist before. But we're doing it, right? We're doing podcasts and stuff now, which was something that wasn't there before. Now it's a project. And we're taking the things from that project 
and we're applying it to these meetings. So it's important. Anyone here ever just look at the title of a project and say, okay, I'm going to write my speech and be done? I, I can honestly say no. And the reason why, for, I can only speak personally, a lot of times I get stumped when I'm looking at a pathways, especially a project, is because the first thing I look at is how can I apply this? Where can I apply this particular project? And, and a lot of times it delays my progress because I'm trying to find that opportune time where I can apply those skills and be able to give a presentation speech and express my findings based on my experiences of using those skills. So that's that's how I use the pathways. Right, so I'm I'm going to give you a, a hint and a clue here. Every single thing that you learn in your previous projects, you should be using on your current project. So that you repeat them. Mm -hmm. Constant repetitive use of those skills will make them second nature. I agree totally. Yes. So if you're if you're going into a project, if you're doing project B and you're not remembering the stuff from project A because you're looking at all the requirements for project B, you're cheating yourself. You need to take the stuff from project A, roll it into project B, and add the new stuff on top of it. This is what will make you grow. If you just drop project A and never used it again, of what value was it? Mm -hmm. The whole point is to reuse them in, over and over and over again. That's how you become a better speaker, a better communicator, a better leader. I like I good point. I like the way that Postmasters has all this stuff set up, but I really think that we advertise kind of badly. Well, instead of sitting there talking about how to be a better communicator. I think we should tell people to join Toastmasters so they learn how to listen. God gave us two ears and one mouth so we can listen twice as much as we can. <laughs> and by doing that, we become a much better communicator by default mm -hmm. because we're listening, we're absorbing, we're understanding rather than interrupting, talking, and throwing out garbage. You know, it reminds me of this, the listening reminds me of an old adage that an elderly gentleman told me many years ago, many decades ago. And that is, and you probably heard it with the emphasis on listening. Don't let your alligator mouth overload your hummingbird backside. And by that, it's it's funny you mentioned that because I just used that today. <laughs> and I thank him for that. <laughs> so it just means be quiet and listen. You'll you won't have to say anything because you'll get everything you need to know without saying a word. Yep. So Carolyn Martin. Either one of you willing to say that you looked at the title and wrote your speech? Are you willing to admit it? Um, in, in the last time I did a speech, I think we were still meeting in person. Oh, my and God. The, that was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. And the manuals, of course, that we had to choose speech from. It had the requirements, right? It had all the yep. certain points that you had to cover in your speech. Uh, so for me, it was, I did. I, I would follow the script of the requirements for the speech, depending on what it was. Like you said, if it was humor, or, um, sales, marketing, whatever it was, had, there were certain points you had to touch. So I 
did my best to go, you know, to follow uh, those guidelines and incorporate all those points into my speech. I don't, I think only the icebreaker would I do it without the, the script, you know, um, just because it was, you know, when you're speaking on something from life experience, you know, it's a lot easier to to do it without the script. I mean, you know, all the other speeches, I did try to follow what the speech called for. Awesome. Good for you, sir. I'm glad to hear that. Go well, ahead. when I'm working in pathways, I always follow what the past tells me to do. For a period of time, I've not been in pathways because I have not decided on a new path, but I did two complete paths, and I did follow what the past suggested that I do. Awesome. Thank you. It's important that that's what we do. Because if we don't, we're cheating ourselves. I did notice one thing, Jim, that where everyone, you can see the improvement to include this particular venue. And that's when, if we don't have a speaker for the evening, we give an impromptu speech. And at that point in time, when somebody's given an impromptu speech, you could see how they gave the speech in that structured learning environment, that learning structure that Toastmasters, the pathways have taught us. It's funny you say that because I was going to use that as an example of how people <laughs> don't do it. So I, I have seen a lot of people give impromptu speeches and the structure of the speech is different than if they prepare the speech. And the way that they present it is different than if they went through the pathways and actually prepared the speech and practiced. Now, of course, the ultimate goal is to be able to get up there and give one impromptu and be able to follow that pattern and be able to do that stuff. But you can only achieve it if you've gone through the pathways, you've followed all the pieces, and you put them to use every single time. So that's why it's important to do this. And I wish that more people would would actually pay attention to the, the pathways and the instruction. I'm glad that we have a club full of people that do it. Maybe we should be able to set a challenge for ourselves and say six months from now, everyone give an impromptu speech and have an outside observer come in and evaluate the structures of all of them and see who's following what and see, see if the person who's observing it could tell what we're doing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm running out of time here. The, the, the meeting's about to be to be finished. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it back over to our presiding officer, Carolyn Moore. Thank you, everyone, for your participation and the promise. I hope you all received the information that you needed and that it will enhance your Toastmasters experience. You can end the recording.